Hi, I'm Julia from New York City. Please like and subscribe to MSA. Ever since I can remember, I've never had a day of peace in my life thanks to my older twin sisters, Tina and Sophia. They were 10 years older, famous models just like my mom, and they loved annoying me. On my sixth birthday, mom gave me a pet piglet, but it went missing a few weeks later on Thanksgiving. I was devastated as I sat down for dinner that night. <clears throat> Julie, you see that turkey? That's your piggy. What? Yeah, mom said they ran out of turkey, so she cooked your piggy instead. You're lying! No! I started bawling like a baby till mom rescued my pet from my sister's closet. They were grounded, but the memory haunted me for years. I could never enjoy another Thanksgiving. Things just got weirder as we grew older. Tina and Sophia got more famous, and I became their geeky little sister with a thing for science and sugar. By 13, I weighed twice the kids my age. One time, mom invited a French photographer to take family portraits. Wow, Tina, that is a beautiful pose. Sophie, yes. Hold that. Juicy, juicy. Julie. Whatever. Pull in your tummy while you smile. A little more. More. Okay, now smile. Press it, smile. I was trying when Tina tickled me a little, and I let out a huge fart. Oh my god, Julie, you stink up the place, you baby cow. When the photos came out, I was so red, it looked like someone had slapped me 20 times. So embarrassing. I exercised and lost most of the extra weight, but my sisters never let me forget that incident. Worse, kids in my school constantly questioned me about my famous sisters, and I hated that. My older brother says that Tina bathes in milk. That's why she's so pretty. And Sophia brushes her hair with a comb made of feathers. Tell, Tell us, please, please, is, is all, all this, this true? true? I got so annoyed, I jumped on one of them and pulled her hair. Tina's breath stinks and so do her clothes. And Sophia brushed her hair last winter. It's all makeup, you moron. Now leave me alone. Turns out it was our teacher's daughter and my stunt landed me in detention. But I didn't care as long as I got some peace. So yeah, life wasn't great, but it wasn't all bad either. I was at the top of my class, and at 17, I even landed a prestigious summer internship at the Natural History Museum. On my first day, I got up an hour early to get ready and reached the museum before my time. But the place was massive, and I got totally lost. Suddenly, I heard a voice behind me. Are you the new intern? Yeah, I'm Julie. Pleased to meet you. Late. You're late. You were supposed to report to me 15 minutes ago. Before I could even apologize, the boy started walking away. I'm Pierre, your supervisor, boss, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so tell me, why is the sky blue? Too slow. How do airplanes fly? How old is the Earth? Do you know anything besides makeup? 4.543 billion years. What? You asked me how old the Earth is? I know my science, okay? But I guess you don't know how to talk to people. Maybe learn that first. <sighs> You're right. I'm sorry. I had a tough morning and I took it out on you. How about we start again? Hi, I'm Pierre, and it's nice to meet you. Over the next few days, Pierre and I hung out a lot. He was my age, the son of a diplomat, and he'd only recently moved to New York. He was also really smart, and we'd often spend hours discussing science stuff. Slowly, I even started liking him a little. One day, I was cleaning up a fossil when my shirt got caught and ripped. Pierre rushed to my side and gave his shirt to me. You're bleeding. Huh? Oh no. Dang it. Pierre hurried back with first aid, and as he was tending to me, I couldn't stop staring at how perfect he was. There. All done. Thanks. I feel much better. I mean, much better. Oh, God. You must think I'm crazy. Nope. I think you're cute. And also, I think you should go out on a date with me. Really? You do? The next day, Pierre took me out to the most amazing restaurant, and we had the best time ever. Soon after, we started dating officially, and things were perfect. That was until one night. Pierre and I were closing the museum, and my sister stormed in with some friends and started messing around with the museum artifacts. What are you guys doing here? You're always working, so we thought you could use some fun. Oh, are you the guy she keeps texting? Dude, she makes the funniest faces when she's on the phone. Like, she wants to poop, but can't. <laughs> Let me show you. Can you stop embarrassing me and go to a club or something? Where's the fun in that? My sisters and their friends just ignored me as they went around taking selfies. But then, the museum security heard the noise and chased them away. I was given an earful, but at least the situation was under control and nothing was damaged. But the next morning, I spotted Tina wearing a dinosaur tooth around her neck. Oh my god, Tina! You're not supposed to take that! It's worth $40,000! Why would a rotten old tooth cost this much? Here, you can have it. I immediately wanted to leave for the museum to put the tooth back before someone noticed, but just then, the police knocked on my door. 
Apparently, the museum staff had seen the CCTV footage, and my sister had already been caught on tape. The twins would have been arrested for stealing, but I called Pierre and asked if his dad could help. He told me once his dad was on the museum board of directors, so I had to take a shot. He saw the video footage too, and he's really mad. I know it's a huge favor, but I'm asking, please, if he could just help me out this one time. I'll even apologize in person. Actually, there's this fundraiser that he wants me to attend. Maybe you can come along too and talk to him. That'll be perfect. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Pierre pulled some strings and the police let off my sisters. And for the first time, they were sorry. The fundraiser wasn't as bad as I thought, even though his dad was really cold even after I apologized. And soon, Pierre started asking me to all the events he got invited to. And things were exciting for a while. I enjoyed dressing up and going around with my handsome boyfriend. But between studies and work, I was getting burnt out. One evening, I didn't have anything, so I raided Tina's closet. Oh my god, who died and left you this hideous dress? It's yours. <clears throat> Must be something I bought to give to a homeless person. Listen, kid, no matter what you wear, you'll always be a dork. Don't change too much to fit in, okay? Did you hit your head or something? Anyway, I'm off. I had no idea what Tina meant, but I was terribly late. And when I got there, Pierre was outside waiting for me. Where were you? Everyone is asking me, and why are you wearing that? Don't you have something designer? Aren't your sisters models? What's wrong with my clothes? Besides, I'm exhausted and I'm here. Before Pierre could reply, someone told us that his dad was looking for him and we went inside. I was standing in a corner feeling angry and tired when I spotted one of the world's most famous marine scientists, Dr. Keller. Oh my God, I am a huge fan, sir. Your work in the space of dead turtles is groundbreaking. And that piece on how sharks are misrepresented in shark movies is amazing. You've read that paper? No one ever has. You should come by my office sometime. I'd love to. I even have something I'd like you to see. Julia, there you are. I want to make you meet someone. Before I could say anything, Pierre dragged me to the other corner of the room. What was that? I just saved you from the worst conversation of your life. You should thank me. Thank you? A world-famous scientist just invited me to his office, and I was discussing my research with him when you dragged me away. Dr. Keller is a bit of a cuckoo. He invites everyone to his office because he's bored all day. It's nothing special. Give me a break. So you think I'm not actually good at what I do? You know what? Save your breath. I've had enough. I'm leaving. And yeah, maybe we should take a break. And with that, I stormed out. Pierre tried calling me later, but I ignored him. And over the next few days, he tried everything to get my attention. He would drop cards in my backpack, leave chocolates, show up with a car full of roses, and when nothing worked, he came up with the ultimate surprise. I spoke to Dr. Keller. He's agreed to meet you next week. Get that research going. You did what? I can't believe it. Oh, thank you. Does that mean we're good? Pierre, I like you, but we belong to different worlds and I really can't afford distractions. I understand, but at least we can be friends, right? And I can help you finish your research paper. That's the least I can do after everything you've done for me. Pierre was a smart guy and I could really use his help. We started working day and night and I often caught him stealing glances at me. By the time we were done, I was exhausted out of my wits. Maybe you should rest. I'll make the final changes and see you at Dr. Keller's office. You sure? Oh, that'll be amazing, and thank you for your help. Pierre kissed me lightly on the forehead, and I had butterflies in my stomach. I knew he still liked me, and I liked him too. Maybe I'd give us another shot. But right now, I had bigger fish to fry. On the day of the meeting, I was feeling really confident and showed up early. I was sitting at the reception waiting for Pierre to show up, when suddenly, I saw him leaving with Dr. Keller and my final research. Okay, I'm gonna be late. Good job on the research, Pierre, and welcome to the team. Your dad will be proud and happy. Oh, hi, Julia. Are you here for Pierre? Actually, yes. We decided to celebrate together, if you liked my research. I wanted to say something, but I was speechless. I felt like someone had punched me in the stomach. Pierre walked toward me, but something inside me snapped, and I slapped him hard. So this is why you didn't want me talking to him at the party, and why you helped me with my research. So you could steal it and claim it as your own. Never in a million years did I think you'd be such a snake, Pierre. Crushed, I ran away as fast as I could. How could I be so stupid? Years of research and hard work gone down the drain. When I got home that day, my sisters could immediately tell something was wrong. They sat me down, and I told them everything. Ugh, why do you even care about this stuff so much? Because I do, okay? It's what I want to do in life. How would you feel if someone took away all your hard work and claimed it as theirs? We wouldn't know. No one can be as pretty as we are. 
Okay, I'm done with this conversation. Sorry. Wait, sit. We know it's devastating that Pierre used you and then threw you under the bus, but that's life. Now, you can either cry about it, or you can move your butt and start from scratch. The choice is yours. Whatever you choose, we're here for you. My sisters were right for once. I couldn't let this one blow take away my whole future, so I decided to plunge myself into my studies. Pierre tried reaching out a million times, but I was done with that lying jerk. I graduated top of my class and went to Harvard. Slowly, I started building my research from scratch and things started looking up. But for some reason, I could never completely understand or forget Pierre's betrayal. Maybe what I was looking for was closure. A year later, my sisters and I were vacationing in Costa Rica when a familiar figure approached me. Julia, is that you? Pierre? You. Take another step and I'll knock your teeth in. I just want to apologize. I know what I did was horrible and unforgivable, but I had my reasons. Really, dude? Yes. My dad is a horrible person, Julia. He told me if I couldn't show him that I can make it as a scientist, he'd have my butt kicked back to London and force me to become a politician. I thought if I got a chance to work with Dr. Keller, I could impress my dad and he'd finally let me follow my passion, so I backstabbed me, stole my research, cost me the chance of a lifetime? Yes, but if it's any consolation, I never joined Dr. Keller. I just couldn't do it. Listen, I don't care about you or your dad anymore. I trusted you and you betrayed me. Nothing you can say or do will make this right. And if you really want to follow your passion, stand up for yourself. Lying and cheating won't get you anywhere. Now save your face and let's not talk again, ever. But I- You heard her. Now leave. Pierre left with a pouty face and both my sisters jumped on me. Look, Look at, at our baby, baby cow, cow, all grown, grown up. up. Get off me, you two. We love you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> love you too. Now stop smothering me. 